today I'm going to walk you through each and every step that you need to do in the state of California in order to start a small business. To start a sole proprietorship in California in 2023 it can seem overwhelming, but I'm going to simplify the process and walk you through step by step as simply as possible. I also want to encourage you to click the link down below to join the California Entrepreneurs Collective, where you will get access to exclusive sets of tools, done for you templates, guides, action plans, coaching, and community. If you don't know what a sole proprietor is or if it is the right type of business for you, I want you to click the link in the video description down below where I walk you through that decision. Now, after you're planning, after you have decided what type of business you're going to do, in order to form your business legally, the very first step that you're going to undergo is going to be to register your DBA, your doing business as name, also known as your fictitious business name statement. Now, this step is only going to be necessary if you plan on operating under a business name that is different than your first and last legal name. If you're operating under just your first and last legal name with nothing else added, then congratulations, your first step is already complete. But for those of you who need to register your doing business as, you're going to want to do this as the first step in the process because all of your other paperwork will require you to list your DBA. Now this is easy to do and it's going to require three fairly simple steps. Number one is going to be to complete and submit the application. Number two is going to be to pay a small fee, which varies from county to county. Number three is going to be in most counties, you will be required to follow the recorder's instructions to publish your DBA in a local newspaper. To complete step number one, you are going to go to the website calgold.ca.gov. Next, select your city and your county and then enter in your business type. This is going to give you a full list of all of the possible things that you need to do in order to start your business. Scroll down until you see fictitious business name or DBA statement and then click the link that's provided. Now this is going to take you directly to your own unique city or county application for filing your fictitious business name statement. Here's the same application, but for a different county. So you can see it's a different form, but CalGold will link you to the correct form for your county. Now, what you need to know here is that you will need to select the type of business entity that you are, or it's going to ask you for business conducted by you will either select sole proprietor or individual since you're filling out this application as a sole proprietor. Now, once you have submitted the form and you have paid the fee to file your fictitious business name statement, you are required in most counties, but not all within 30 days of filing to get your statement published in a newspaper, which is in general circulation in the county, stating that your fictitious business name was filed. Now there are some specifics here, but what you need to know to keep this simple, now once you receive confirmation from the county clerk recorder's office, which is where you file this statement, they will typically send you out an additional paper letting you know this requirement and then letting you know the contact information for several newspapers that they recommend. All you need to do is call or email one of those publications, let them know that you need to have your fictitious business name statement published and they will know exactly how to help you. The second step for you is going to be obtaining an EIN, an employer identification number. And yes, this applies to you even if you don't actually have or won't have employees. This is not a necessary step. However, I do highly recommend doing this because obtaining an EIN is fast, it is free, and it's going to protect you from using your own personal social security number on a wide array of paperwork. Do this as the next step in the process because other paperwork is going to ask for you to provide either an EIN number or your personal social security number. So it's best to have this set up so you can go ahead and just start using an EIN number and protect your social security number. Now this is easy and free and it only requires a simple application through the IRS. Do not pay a third party service to do this simple task. I'm going to leave the link on where to apply for this down below. 
and you're going to click the blue button to apply. Next, you're going to be prompted to enter in what type of legal business structure is applying for an EIN. You will select sole proprietor, unless of course you're a different type of business entity. Next, it's going to ask you to confirm that you are a sole proprietor or to select that you are a household employer because you hired someone to do household work. So they want you to differentiate between the two. Next, enter in the requested information and they will ask you for your social security number here, but that is the last time that you're going to need to use it because you will therefore be able to utilize your EIN number going forward. Step number three, which is to obtain a seller's permit if you are required to do so. Now the CDTFA is the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. And they state that if you sell or lease merchandise, vehicles, or other tangible property in California, even if it's temporary, then you're required to register with the CDTFA. And you must pay sales tax on your taxable sales. Now, when you register with the CDTFA, you're registering and receiving a seller's permit. This then allows you to make those sales, but also requires that you collect and remit sales tax to the CDTFA. Now, many of you might not be sure if you specifically are required to get a seller's permit for your own unique business. So first ask yourself, are you selling tangible products and are you making three or more sales per year? If you are selling tangible products and you are making three or more sales per year, then the CDTFA states that you in most cases would be required to receive a seller's permit. So what about those of you that have a mixture of things? Let's say you are selling a tangible product, but you are also selling and charging for your labor. If you are charging for labor, labor is subject to sales tax when it results in the creation or future sale of a tangible product only. For example, if you make a ring for a specific customer, you are creating tangible personal property. Therefore, the total amount you charge would be subject to sales tax. On the other hand, labor costs for making repairs, such as resetting a diamond, for example, are not taxable since they do not result in the creation of tangible personal property. Now, for those of you who are conducting three or more sales per year and who are selling tangible property, there is an exception. If you are utilizing a marketplace facilitator to conduct your sales, and the marketplace is the one collecting and remitting the sales tax, then you do not need a seller's permit. Now, a marketplace facilitator is a third-party company that hosts your shop and collects and remits the sales tax every time you make a sale. So how do you know if the company, the platform that you are selling on is a marketplace facilitator? I want you to check and see if they charge and keep the sales tax. If they are keeping the sales tax themselves, and this is something that never passes through your hands, then they are in most cases a marketplace facilitator. In order to make sure, check the seller's frequently asked questions on whatever marketplace you are using to conduct your sales. Most likely, they will have a section specifically devoted to taxes. Now that you have decided whether or not you're required to actually obtain a seller's permit, the next step is going to be completing the online application. But we're at cdtfa.ca.gov. Now from this page, we're gonna scroll down and we're going to click on register or apply for a new business activity or location. We're gonna click selling items or goods in California, which is applying for a seller's permit. Now, if any of these other categories are applicable to you, you'll make sure to check them and click next. Next, you're going to be asked a series of questions. Are you selling alcoholic beverages? Are you selling tobacco products? Are you selling tires? Are you selling electronic covered of electronic devices? Go ahead and click next. Does your business activity include fuel products, selling lumber, retail sale of prepaid wireless, selling or manufacturing of lead acid batteries? And click next.
What type of business are you registering this activity for? Now, this is where you're going to select the entity type for your business. Now, so next you're going to be asked some identification questions. You're going to be asked for either a taxpayer ID or a social security number. And you're going to go ahead and enter that in. Next, you're going to be asked here for an FEIN number. Now, an EIN number is a, a federal employer identification number. That's not required for you. So if you do have one, you can go ahead and enter it in here. And if you don't have one, you can go ahead and skip it. The same is true for the SEIN, which is a state employer identification number. You can go ahead and skip that as well. Next, are you changing from one type of business entity to another? Enter which type of ID you are going to be inputting, and you are going to select the state for that driver's license number, and you're going to input your driver's license number here. You are gonna confirm that yes, you would like to apply for a seller's permit and click next. Now, next you're gonna be asked if you would like a temporary permit. Now, temporary permits only last 90 days. So most likely you will wanna answer no to this question. You will answer no to this question if you want a permanent ongoing seller's permit. But if you want your permit to expire after 90 days, you'll select yes. Next, you are gonna be asked, will the business be accepting credit card payments, yes or no? If you select yes, you're going to be asked for a merchant card processor name and a merchant card processor account. Now, you can advance through the application without entering in this information. So you can skip it and bypass it if you do not currently have your credit card processor set up. However, if you do have it set up, this is where you will input that information. Next, they're going to ask you, are you making internet sales? If you select yes, you will then be asked, are you making internet sales through a third party? A third party would be a marketplace such as Etsy, eBay, or another seller's marketplace. If you select yes, then you are going to have to provide the third party site, which you plan on using. Now, if you do not quite have your website all put together yet, you are going to enter in your domain where you plan to have your website. And under the third party site, if you don't have that set up yet, you can just type in the generalized third party website and that should suffice. Next, you're gonna be asked for your NAICS code. This is the code for the type of business that you are operating. So you are going to do a keyword search for your type of business. Type in the type of business that you have. You'll go ahead and click on the corresponding code, scroll down, click OK, and it's going to input it for you. Go ahead and click Next. Next, you'll be asked, does your business conduct any of the following business activities? Answer yes or no according to your business. Next, you're going to be asked for location information. So is the location of your business temporary for a temporary event? Yes or no? You will then enter in your business street address, city, state information. Next, you're going to be asked for your doing business as, your DBA or your fictitious business name statement. Now, your business name needs to line up with what you have listed on your business license and with your DBA or your fictitious business name. So if you are a sole proprietor and you're doing business under your own first and last name with nothing extra, nothing changed added onto it, then you do not need to file a DBA statement. You can go ahead and enter in your first and last name here. But if you are doing business under a different name that is not your first and last name, you will need to type in what that name is here as well as file a DBA with your city. Please note that stating your business name here on the seller's permit does not legally claim that as you're doing business name with your city. That is a separate filing that you'll need to do. Next, you're going to enter in the date that you would like your seller's permit to start. Click, are you buying or transferring an existing business? Now, you are going to type in your projected monthly sales. Now, the CDTFA it doesn't need an exact number here. You are just, most likely, if you're filing for a seller's permit, you're just starting your business. So give a really rough estimate. You will later claim the actual amount when you file your sales tax. So don't stress over this amount. Just go ahead and do a rough estimate. Do you anticipate $0 in monthly sales? Hopefully not. Projected monthly taxable sales. So 
Your monthly sales are the total amount of sales, including tangible items and services and anything else you might be taking in money for. Now your taxable sales are going to be the amount that is subject to sales tax, meaning tangible products or services that were worked into the creation of a tangible product. So go ahead and estimate that here. Do you anticipate $0 in monthly taxable sales and products that will be sold during the course of business? Go ahead and enter in a few of the products that you anticipate to be selling. Next, you're going to select where you do and keep your records. So if it is the address you provided, you're going to check that box. And if you are going to be keeping your records at a different address, you will click add a different address. Next, you're gonna be asked to provide your supplier's information. This is going to be the companies that you purchase supplies for to either create your product or resell to your clients and customers. Now, if you're a new business, you most likely might not have your sellers ready to go. You may not have already purchased from them, but what they want here is they want one supplier at a minimum that you plan to purchase from. So if you aren't sure, look somebody up, look up a supplier, and whatever you plan on selling, find someone in that category, take their business information, and go ahead and use it. Next, they're gonna give you a summary, including the start date of your seller's permit and your reporting basis. Now, a reporting basis is the frequency at which you must report your sales tax and pay your sales tax to the CDTFA. Now, most people will be on a quarterly reporting basis. Now, I acknowledge that I've read and understood the above account information. Select yes and click next. Next, you're going to provide your own personal name, your role in the application, your email address, as well as some contact info. Next is your declaration of intent. Make sure you read this and make sure you check it and click next. This states that you are intending to register for a California tax or fee permit license and our account with the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Once you click next, you are going to be confirmed that your application has been submitted. Now, once you have completed filing your application, you want to then create a registration for an account on the CDTFA so that you have an online portal to manage your account. So what you're going to do next is you are going to go down here, you're going to click sign up for a username, click that you are the owner of a business, click next. Now, most likely you have not received a security code yet. They must mail you to your mailing address a security code, and you must then use that code to finish the online registration process. So you're going to click yes or no if you've received the code. You're going to click next. You are then going to input your information here. Select your account type, which will be sales and use tax, and input your account number here. Click Submit, and then in within several weeks, you will receive in the mail a letter with that security code so that you can complete the process of setting up your account online. Step four is to obtain a business license. Now, this can also be known as a business tax certificate. First, you're going to visit calgold.ca.gov. I'm going to link the website down below. Enter in your city name as well as your business type and click search. From here, you're going to locate the section that, that refers to a business license and click the link to the website. This is going to take you to your city's specific area where you can apply for a business license. Each city is going to do things a little bit differently, but in general, business licenses are renewed once a year on a calendar year basis. Business license start date is going to be the first date that your business started in that particular city. Sole proprietor, you will be asked on here to provide either an EIN number or a social security number. If you do not have an EIN number, then providing your social security number as a sole proprietor is fine. I'm going to show you the city of Santa Clara's application. This one is one that was easily accessible for me to show you. And in general, they're going to be asking for the same pieces of information, although the exact fee and layout might look a little bit different from city to city. 
They're going to first ask you for your business name as well as a DBA if you are operating under a different doing business as name. They're going to ask for your business address and your mailing address. Now, if you are operating out of your home and you have a home-based business, then this would in fact be your home address unless you have registered for a virtual office. If you have registered for a virtual office and you are specifically paying for virtual office services, then you will utilize that address. However, a PO box is not a business address. So for those of you wondering if you can use a PO box here for business address, the answer is no. You can, however, utilize that PO box for your mailing address. Next, you're going to be asked, do you claim an exemption to pay business taxes? Now, the only businesses that are going to be exempt from paying taxes are going to be those who are eligible for a 501c3 status, meaning that you operate for religious, educational, scientific, or other charitable purposes. They do not give net income to any private individual, such as the owner or the founder. So in most cases, this does not apply to you and you would check no. Next, you would check that you are a sole proprietor and because you're a sole proprietor, you may or may not have a fat Next, you're going to check that you're a sole proprietor and then where it asks for your federal tax ID, your FEIN, you will either include your federal EIN number if you have one, or if you do not, then you may include your personal social security number. Next, enter in information about the business owner, which is you, and you're going to enter in your seller's permit number. If you have a contractor's license in the class, you're going to enter that in and then enter in the information about your business's location. The fee for obtaining a business license or business tax certificate is going to vary from city to city, but you can see an example of Santa Clara's fees here just to give you an idea of what you can expect to pay. Now there's one last step that you're going to need to do in order to register your small business as a sole proprietor in the state of California. Now this step is to obtain zoning clearance. This is going to go for you whether you have a commercial space, you're operating out of a separate office space that is not residential, or if you are operating as a home business, you must obtain zoning clearance from your city's planning department. Now, the majority of you are going to be seeking out obtaining a home occupation permit. This is going to allow you to legally establish or enact limited business operations from within your home. While the majority of cities and counties will allow you to operate a home business, there are some restrictions on exactly what types of businesses you can operate and some cities and counties might not even allow you to do any business operations in your home. So don't skip this step. If you're getting zoning clearance for a separate studio or office space that is not your residential home, then you are going to need to undergo a fire inspection annually. If you are simply seeking out a home occupation permit because you're going to be doing business out of your residence, then most cities will grant this for a minimal fee and no annual fire inspection will be needed. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to visit CalGold at calgold.ca.gov. Type in your city or your county and then select your business type. From there, you're going to scroll down until you see the land use permit zoning clearance section. This is going to tell you the phone number of the department that you need to contact in order to obtain that zoning clearance. Click through to the website or call into the office. Specific restrictions, fees, etc., are going to vary from city to city or from county to county. But just to give you an example, I'm going to pull up the city of Sacramento's information here. Their application fee is $156. They have some specific requirements in terms of how many employees, how often employees can be working there, how many customers can be there on site, etc. They also will state exactly what types of businesses are or aren't permitted, as well as some other regulations to make sure that they are preserving the residential neighborhood as opposed to turning the street address into a busy storefront. The Community Development Department in your city is either going to have this application listed on their website or when you call into their office, you can obtain it there. 
Once again, each city is going to have its own unique application, but just to give you an idea of what to expect, here's a brief example of some of the questions you're going to see. Now, while I have labeled this as the last step in the process of registering your sole proprietorship in the state of California, I wanna make sure that you understand that specific industries, counties, and cities will have their own unique requirements. So I want you to make sure that you understand that this is a generalization and that you always want to defer to calgold.ca.gov to look up your city and county and industries specific requirements. Now, while your legal registration paperwork and documents might be complete with the state of California, this is not the only video that you need to watch because there's important information that you need to know going forward in the next video here. Make sure you watch this video next so that you know how to prepare.